name is Scott Denman. I'm the rector of St. John's Episcopal Church in Oakland, California. And uh, we are going viral with our church. Uh, we're doing it online. And uh, this is the scripture lounge portion of uh, our worship lounge uh, for this week. And it's a, a great privilege uh, for me uh, to welcome uh, the Reverend Dr. John Cater, who is well known at St. John's. Uh, he is currently in Hong Kong as we record this session about the gospel. Uh, welcome, John. Thank you, and it's great to be with you, and it's certainly great to be with the people of, of St. John's. I'm still hoping that before before <laughs> this this year is out, I'll be back in California for a few weeks and, and look forward to being, being back at St. John's. But in the meantime, I am here in Hong Kong, teaching away online, of course, at Minghua Theological College, which is the Anglican seminary for uh, the Anglican Church of Hong Kong. Um, we're 15 hours ahead of you, so so um, I'm talking to you, and it's it's Thursday night, but it's Friday morning here. Great. Um, so uh, we have a very interesting gospel reading, which uh, we're going to spend some time looking at today, and uh, I'm going to let it's a, a long gospel reading, so we won't. Uh, read the whole thing, but uh, if you'd be willing to summarize um, the reading for today, we have also provided a link in this uh, uh, email to everybody. You can uh, download uh, that link and look at the, the readings for today and uh, use them for your own purposes, but uh, we're just going to summarize here. So uh, I think this is a very interesting gospel. It certainly is a long gospel. Uh, but it's and it's probably one that that may or may not be all that familiar. Uh, but it, it begins with Jesus encountering a man who's been blind from birth, um, and his disciples ask him what is a perfectly ordinary question from a traditional Jewish point of view, which is, um, how come this man is born blind? Um, is it his? Is it the fault of his sin, or is it the fault of his parents' sin? And Jesus says something very, very interesting. He says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. Um, I don't, I hope Jesus didn't mean that the man has been living for, for his whole life blind just so God could, could sort of show off. I think what, what, what he really means is, uh, the most important thing is that he says very clearly, don't think that the reason this man is born blind, don't think that the reason that this man is, is the way he is, is because of sin. Uh, it's simply part of the way things are, but God has something to do with it, but not in the way that you think that, that that's true at all. Um, and um, then Jesus makes this comment that, that he is the light of the world, which obviously when you're talking with somebody, um, somebody who's been born blind, um, that that's a that's a remarkable thing to say in itself and then there's the longest part of the gospel has jesus actually um doing something which is which is quite unusual in the healing stories um instead of simply saying um receive your sight which is what we're used to from jesus saying you know get up and walk or or um whatever uh sort of sort of um kind of overnight or not even overnight but instantaneous healing uh, he he does something which which seems quite strange he, he tells the man to go um, and to the pool of Siloam and um, wash but before he does that he mixes mud and saliva into a paste and puts it on the man's eyes and then the man does what Jesus says and he washes in in this pool which is well known um, to to the people in, who lived the story, uh, and sure enough, he can see. And then the, the bulk of the story has to do with how come, how did this happen? Um, and um, there's a long, long section where people say, well, maybe it's not even the man we thought think it is. Maybe it's not the man born blind. So they ask him, yes, of course I was born blind. They don't quite know how to how to 
believe him, and so they they bring his parents into the into the into the equation. Um, and the the big question is how how does this happen, and who does Jesus think he is um, restoring the sight of a man who's been born blind? Um, but then there's a long dialogue about about seeing and not seeing. Um, and the end of the gospel, I think, is probably in some ways the most problematic part of the part of the story, um, because you see uh, a kind of controversy, not so much about about uh, with the blind man, but a controversy between um, between the, particularly the Pharisees, those Jews who are who are who are trying the hardest to keep the Jewish law in a situation where that's not the easiest thing to do, given the fact that. Um, the Romans don't have much respect for it or them. Um, and, and the issue is, how can somebody um, like Jesus heal this man? Um, and um, the, the issue is, that what, what we're actually seeing in those verses is um, a reflection of not so much Jesus' world as a reflection of John's world when he's when he's writing this gospel. Um, when the when the 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 controversy between the Christians and and the Jews has become a much a much hotter discussion than it had been actually probably in Jesus' own time. Um, and um, I think that that's one of the things that we have to we have to be aware of that John. John really has some real problems with Judaism. John can't understand why Jews don't, don't think Jesus is who Christians think he is. Um, I think that's too bad because I think, I think probably there's some fairly good reasons why most Jews didn't understand who Jesus was in the way that we do. But the, the, fundamental, the fundamental issue or question that the gospel raises is about seeing and who sees and who doesn't see. Um, and it's really hard for the people who don't accept what Jesus has done to see what's happened and to take it at its face value. And instead of saying, well, you know, maybe, maybe something we don't like is going on here and simply accept it as, as gift. Um, so I think in the end, what the story is about is who sees and who, who doesn't see, who's blind and who isn't blind. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, certainly has a, a, f a fair amount of relevance to what's happening in the world, I would say right now, about how people are choosing to, uh, to see our need for healing, for one, and also um, uh, trying uh, the temptation to point fingers and to say, Here's the sin. Here, here, there, there's a sin that happened, and therefore, right. this is why we're in the state of where we are. Um, right. Yeah, I think that sometimes can, uh, uh, you know, in, involve a, a, a lot of racial implications uh, in this case, and uh, Absolutely. a lot of blaming of other cultures and uh, so forth, rather than seeing it as an opportunity perhaps to bring uh, the world together in new ways and, and, and help us uh, find new connections with each other. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's interesting because, because um, one of the things, when, whenever something awful happens, I'm thinking of 9-11, I'm thinking of Hurricane Katrina, uh, people always want to know why is, why is this happening? Um, you know, whose fault is it? Um, and obviously that, that was very much uh, in people's minds when, in, in this story. You know, who, who sinned, the man or his, or his parents? Well, uh, and the, the interesting thing to me is that Jesus never offers an explanation for why, why there are bad things in the world. Um, he certainly doesn't offer much of an explanation about why bad things happen to good people. He simply says, look, don't, don't look for blame. That's not the point. You know, there were people who, who said that 9-11 that, um, that, that, um, was God's punishment on the U.S. for this or that. And, and uh, 
Uh, I remember reading that some Christians said that Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans because New Orleans was a particularly wicked city. Um, Jesus, I don't, you can't really read this gospel and make dumb statements like that. Um, <laughs> Jesus says, nobody sinned. This is, this is just part of the way things are. Um, we've been lucky, mostly. Um, certainly, Americans have been a lot luckier than other people. Uh, there, there, there are many people in the world who, who live with, with disaster um, 24-7. Um, we mostly don't. And when, when, when something happens, I think maybe because we are so fortunate, um, people want to, want to blame somebody. Um, and I think what Jesus is saying, first of all, is accept the fact that there is evil in the world, that there's suffering in the world, that there's pain in the world. Don't ask who's, whose fault it is. Don't ask who sinned. Um, ask what God, where God is in this situation and what, is, what, what can we expect God to do. And, and I think, particularly thinking about the, the, the situation we're in right now, how can we do what God wants us to do? How can we find, figure out what God is calling us to do? Um, because that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, well, what am I supposed to do in this situation? Well, I'm supposed to use the power that I have to, to, to help this man to see. And, and so I think, I think one of the things this gospel says to me is, we who are, who are Christian and we who are trying to be faithful in a time like this, one of our jobs is to help people to see. Um, right. Yeah, uh, it's, I think that uh, uh, I, I'm reminded of, uh, well, first of all, I just want to point out something to you. I was digging around in some of my reflections uh, in uh, sermon files of, of Lent 4A. <laughs> and uh, you know what I found? I found a sermon from you, John. That was given Is that right. True? Yes, it was given right after uh, Katrina, and uh, mm -hmm. you were addressing this human tendency to to look for blame or fault or is it punishment? That's bad things happen at these times, and we don't see them as an opportunity for God to work. We we want to sort of point a finger somewhere, and you had expressed mm -hmm. uh, great pride that. Uh, uh, right after someone, like you said, had criticized, uh, um, uh, you know, New Orleans and for being a wicked city, um, to, uh, you know, rather uh, finding joy in the fact that St. John's was sending a, uh, actually we ended up sending uh, two mission trips down to to assist with uh, the recovery there. Um and that's a different way of looking at it. You know, it's not looking backwards. It's saying what, you know, you can't change what's happened. The question is what defines this is how we're going to respond to it. Right. Exactly. What do you, what do you do? What are, what are we called to do? And, but, but first of all, we have to see, um, you know, looking, looking at, at what's been happening in the U S from the vantage point of Hong Kong, um, it, it's one of the one of the hardest things for us here to understand is how long it took people in the, in other parts of the world to see what was happening and and I think this this story is full of people who don't want to see mm -hmm. um, who 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 will look anywhere but what's staring them in the face um, and particularly I have to say people in leadership who who have the responsibility of 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 seeing and 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 choose not to see and that's that's been true in in the u.s it's been true in europe um where it was not true was in china and in hong kong um because because people here um have went through the sars epidemic um 13 i guess it was 13 years ago and um they remember and and so uh the kind of uh, the kind of kind just undifferentiated panic and fear that's going on where you are has not happened here um, because because people see people people saw from the beginning they said oh this is this is this is not good and we have to do something and so um, everybody started started 
doing what they needed to do, which in our case means putting on masks and not going out without hand sanitizer. Um, and and um, I have to say that one of the one of the things that has absolutely just just boggled my mind is the news that tens of thousands of American young people are frolicking right now on the beaches of Florida. Um, and, and soon will be coming home to spread the virus to their families, to their parents and their grandparents, and, and who knows who else. And I mean, that, that's, that's, what, that's what you do when you don't see. Um, you leave the beaches open when you don't see. Um, you hoard and don't share when you don't see. Um, the the amazing thing here is the way that you know I have gotten since I've been in Hong Kong unasked I've gotten two boxes of fifty masks I have a hundred extra masks um, because because wow. people knew knew I was here and they knew I'd come from the U S and they 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 shared what they had um, that's that's what you do when you see. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, a very uh, uh, proactive, really loving thing to to say. You, you need you need this, and we want to help you uh, to be prepared right. for this. Right, yes. right. So, so um, you know, seeing seeing, I think is is everything. It's it's interesting. One of the courses that I'm teaching here, this term is called practical theology, and it's. It's very much a course about bringing our faith to bear on everyday situations, and um, one of the th and, and ironically, we just we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and well, talked about it online, of course, in in class. Um, the the ways the situations that 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 happen to all of us that we that we sometimes don't notice, and I. When I'm here, I'm always collecting newspaper articles to, to use in class. And one of the one of the articles that I that I took and, and posted for the class was an article about the fact that here in Hong Kong, uh, there are there are literally hundreds, maybe thousands, of elderly people, um, mostly women, who spend all day every day collecting cardboard off the streets so that they can recycle it and that's how they survive and i've seen old women collecting cardboard more times than i can even even tell you and um and yet once we started talking about it uh, everybody in my class said oh we see that all the time and and it, it simply doesn't doesn't register and so um the the when you when you when you open your eyes and you see what's going on, then you have to ask. Then you then you have to say, well, why is this happening? Um, who are these people that it's happening to, and what are the implications for us in this in this situation? Um, and and so I think that's you know that's that's what Jesus did. <laughs> that's what Jesus did in this in this story. He said, oh, here's a man born blind. Um, Let's see what we can do about it. Uh, and the wonderfully ironic and painfully ironic thing that strikes me in, in that context is that a lot of people didn't, didn't want him to do it uh, because it upset their way, their way of looking at things. It upset their, their very nice, neat, us, them, this is the good thing to do, this is the bad thing to do. Um, these people are sinners, we're not sinners. All those ways that we have to separate us and them turn out to, to get in the way of doing what clearly God intended to happen in, in, in this kind of setting. And I, it seems to me that that's, that's about as relevant as any, any gospel story I can think of for, for people right now. And that's, that's a good place to end. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that you were willing to do this. Uh, it was quite a trick to figure out our, our time change and schedules and technology, but we did it. And I, I know we that did it. We did it. Uh, people will be so pleased to uh, 
uh, hear from you and see from you. And certainly you're in our hearts and you're, you're in our prayers and, uh, uh, keep safe and use some of those masks that were given to you. Oh, I do. I do. I wish you all were too. <laughs> they work. <laughs> Take care. All right. Thank you again, John. You're so welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.